Tonight on the Cooligans, we are joined by our, our dear friend, uh, a, right. a, a, a hero to American soccer, <laughs> to to Premier League coverage, to That's right. to to you know to Instagram live haircuts. That's right. He's <laughs> the only client of my failed barber shop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's a it's an honor to him. This is going to be his testimonial, basically. That's right. We got Cal Martino on the show, baby. <laughs> so all this and more today on the Cooligans! Hi, this is Ashlyn Harris and Allie Krieger, and you are listening to our best friends and favorite comedians, The Cooligans, <laughs> bitch. Yeah, baby! <laughs> yes. <laughs> Come Ooh. on. Okay, yeah, we, that's how that's how we start this show with some a little bit of uh, pizzazz, some excitement. Right. Okay, what, what Latinos like to call a little audio perico. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Which is not gonna get bleeped because we don't know what it means. <laughs> so everyone must adjust. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. Uh, again, uh, my, my name is Christian Polanco. I'm Alexis Guerrero. All right. We are the Cooligans. We are your favorite stand-up comedians that host the funniest show about soccer. Bro, we better be your favorite comedians that do a show about soccer. And of course, we're the funniest. Christian is 100% right. He always is, right? Because he's mm-hmm. one of the Cooligans. But it's not just that, <laughs> Christian. We also happen to be the gulliest. Ah, ah. <laughs> yeah, and that's one word. Gully is ah ah. <laughs> so uh, absolutely thrilled uh, uh, for today's show because uh, not only are we, uh, not only do we get to see each other, but we get to see another one of our dear friends. I think he's he's moved from uh, just uh, a guy who played soccer to yeah. uh, uh, you know an international uh, you know hair sex symbol. Uh, That's right, which I kind of ruined, right? <laughs> yeah, we'll get I to that. Ruin that. When you see him, you're going to be yeah. really, really stunned. And it's What did Alexis, Alexis do? <laughs> <laughs> I like how you call them just the guy who played soccer. I mean, you know him from his time at MLS, but you probably know him more as the guy who sounds like he's always right because he speaks in an American accent on NBC <laughs> Sports Premier League coverage. Ladies and gentlemen, unless you're driving and you shouldn't be, it's coronavirus. Go home. You're killing nurses. Put your hands together for the one, the only, like it's seven o'clock from my man, Kyle Martino, everybody. Kyle, what's there up, brother? No, I can hear them. I can hear them, Kyle. You don't got to do it. I mean, first off, I love all the qualifiers where you're, where your favorite comedians that host a show about soccer with a guy yeah. who the name of it today. And one yeah, of us no wears a hat sometimes. Yeah, yeah. No one could challenge us when we get that specific. You know what I mean? Right. That's out there. <laughs> we're we're we're, oh, we're giving our podcast, Your podcast is the only one that comes with instructions. Uh-huh. I, I mean, I thought I was I doing a podcast sign on or, or or putting IKEA furniture together. I just took lawn <laughs> or I'm just getting on your show. Which and I you know, know we come with more directions than an IKEA furniture because they never tell you what to do with all the bolts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, it's, and look, and and you won't understand the language. I promise. Hell yeah. <laughs> so Kyle, I think first thing is like you know, Good Morning Vietnam, but Good Morning Queens. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yo, yo, what's good, Bronx? That's the name of our movie. <laughs> uh, Kyle, how are you doing, man? It's so good uh, to see you. Uh, for the first thing that obviously stands out when people see you is uh, your new hairstyle. Uh, or the earring that suggests you're the bad boy boyfriend of the hot daughter on an 80s sitcom. <laughs> So where where did you get a dangling (laughs) earring during coronavirus? I got a lot of tricks. Um, Unfortunately, uh, I I decided to, for my first trick during um, this tough time, get that man right there to help me uh, do my own fade for the first time ever. Um, If you if you didn't see the video, if you weren't watching, if you weren't one of the ten people that that witnessed that live. (laughs) It was a total tragedy, and I, I tried to overcome that tragedy by dyeing my hair blonde. Um, it turned out to be Save the Crew yellow, um, and <laughs> and then I shaved that and said, what else could I do to totally embarrass myself or, or, or have to take it out or replace it in a couple of weeks? I looked to see if my earrings from high school, if the holes are still there. They are. And so I went Jordan documentary last yeah, dude. <laughs> Diego documentary. I'm, I'm watching too many documentaries. 
Lost Boys, Keith O'Sullivan, <laughs> George Michael. It's all it's all there. It's yeah, all yeah. there. Yeah. Thank God you didn't see the Michael Jordan Haynes commercial where he had the Hitler mustache. It would be like, Kyle, <laughs> get off the internet. Get off the internet. Shut him down. Shut him down. <laughs> get Kyle off the internet. Your Wi-Fi's done, Kyle. <laughs> if so, my DIY project shouldn't be on myself anymore. Yeah. Okay. I, you know what? It's entertaining for all of us. So, you well, know, but go yeah. as long as you as long as it's Not safe, you <laughs> feel yeah. free to continue. Build a bookshelf, will you, buddy? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Jesus. So, uh, so, Kyle, how exactly, uh, how are you doing? Uh, how are you, uh, you know, uh, we, we've spoken to a, a, a lot of uh, current athletes uh, that are, uh, are, you know, handling the quarantine in their own way, maintaining, your, you know, training. I know that you've been doing a lot of stuff on Instagram, whether uh, you're, you're giving tutorials on, on, on tips to stay fit or, or, or drills to do. Uh, how are you uh, coping and handling this uh you know, this time, uh, not well. Um, if I'm, if I'm being honest, I've run out of things to distract myself from how much that sucks. Okay. Um, I mean, listen, we know why we've been staying at home. We know that there's a really scary thing going on. We know that it's serious. And I think, um, we should still be able to, to laugh. You guys wouldn't have a, a life left if we weren't allowed to sit and find some way. We don't have football, although the Bundesliga is back to just get us back feeling some semblance of normalcy, you know, that, that, that stuff kind of runs out eventually. Right. You know, um, I started trying to learn the piano that didn't, that didn't go great. I learned like the intro to one Adele song and, and then put it away. Yeah. Um, I got back to, um, just messing around on Instagram. I wasn't really using Instagram a lot until, until the, the lock in and, uh, I was doing this observations from isolation that stopped very quickly. I mean, I kind of, I, I have a very short attention span. It runs out very fast. <laughs> but then the kind of cool thing happened where in a way I kind of remembered being a kid again when we didn't have phones and we didn't have all this stuff to kind of connect us and constantly have us check in who liked this, who looked at this and like, the soccer side of it, I found the little kid in me that would go around the house and figure out all these drills that I, that I used to do. So it's been, it's been kind of fun, you know, with that, like digging up the time capsule of ways you used to pass the time when, you know, the, the electricity went out or you were stuck in the house in a snowstorm or you just were a young, awkward kid going through puberty and didn't want to go outside. I mean, all those things have been bringing out some of the uh, the old tricks. That's for sure. Yeah. It also feels like you are, again, that. Uh, young awkward teen going through puberty because of uh, everything you do yeah. in your hair, your earring. Uh, I'm just going to go through puberty again. <laughs> <laughs> just me trying to help him cut his hair. He says that I, I, ate, I was basically a spectator. I'm like, dude, do this with the, with the, and he was doing whatever he wanted. I'm like, hold it even. He's like, Burr. he's just well, cutting no, home. The problem was the delay because I, I didn't have a, I didn't have a, a mirror for behind me. So I, I turned around and basically yeah. was going like this, and and he was going stop. But by the time I heard him, I was like, I'm all the way up here. Yeah, but you didn't listen yeah. to me before that either. So the <laughs> no, delay it was only delayed you not listening to yeah, me. Yeah, but that that very much was like the the trust fall of haircuts. You yeah, know? yeah. Uh, yeah, I learned it right on the ground. People, my favorite thing is like, look, some people who follow Kyle also know who we are. There's a segment that don't. And those people watched that live and they were like, yo, Kyle, your barber sucks. <laughs> like, people are like, this guy doesn't know anything about cutting hair. I'm like, yeah, of course not. I kept having to say, guys, I'm a comedian. He asked a comedian to help him cut his hair without a mirror. Did you ever oh. vacuum all the hair up from your, from uh, your, your ex-wife's uh, studio? She, yeah. She kicked, she kicked me out of there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Well, we got you more. We'll we we get back. Go ahead. Way to start um, transition out of a marriage. Let's get divorced and live together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That'll that'll speed things <laughs> up. <laughs> uh, Kyle, this is. Uh, By the way, you, we, it, Kyle's on a low battery right now. <laughs> <laughs> we should. Yeah, we should mention that, Kyle. Hey, you're working remotely, Kyle. <laughs> so we have what, 15 percent battery? Yeah, so. I have a full battery for this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I forgot we had to send full instructions. <laughs> Doesn't listen whenever it involves let us. Me, let me add to page 20 of the instructions on how to get on your show. 
Um, make sure that your laptop's plugged into the wall. <laughs> I mean, that okay. seems obvious, what? but yes. <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, well, this is essentially uh, like a time bomb, sort of. We're trying to get through this before this <laughs> falls apart. Um, but Kyle, you you did mention uh, your divorce, and mm -hmm. it's been interesting because you are a, a very uh, open person, very public. You, you also, um, you know, would, would talk about uh, mental health and uh, a, a lot of these subjects, but I'm, I'm curious because th this has been, uh, um, th this, uh, this format for a, a, a separation has been more popular. Bring it out, man. Just say it. You can say it. <laughs> so, because sometimes people are, are very critical. So, so, so basically you are, are divorced and, but it doesn't feel like you are right. It's publicly. Yeah. Uh, and, a lot of people even some it's people like you got talk, it's like you're quitting from your job but you're still going to the office <laughs> so, yeah because so, yeah. uh, you know I'm you one. just you also you just had a child uh another child recently right and it, so it's like this yeah. all this stuff is going on so it just seems like a lot more dramatic than you might be letting on right and and i'm curious because i know it's clearly a conscious choice so so how is uh how are you sort of feeling and how did you come to that decision without getting you know i don't want to be like getting too personal about like why'd you break up or anything like that yeah. it's yeah. just really about like <laughs> it's really like, how are you holding up? Like this is a segment we like to call "Cow." What'd you do? <laughs> yeah, I, I just screw this up. Um, so you know what's like anyone when you look at it on paper is expecting something really scandalous, right? When 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 you have two kids, you've been together as long as we are, and you're getting ready to have a third. You know, everyone wants a juicy story. It's so funny, like Us Weekly and all these things that were coming out with stuff. Like the headlines were terrible because, like, it was like you know, couple that still loves each other, but decides not to be married anymore, like aren't married, but are having a kid. It's like, everyone's like, so, but you know, what's so funny about it is, um, you know, like I met Eva um, at a time in my life that was really tough. I mean, I just had a career ending injury. Um, didn't realize it then, but realize it now was going through serious depression and had during most of my career and didn't really know how to deal with it. So she, I mean, she was there to save my life, really, in a time that was incredibly tumultuous, a lot of transition, didn't know which way was up, and was kind of just without the game as, as a cathartic anchor to kind of keep me grounded every single day. I was, I was just really all over the place, place and, it, and it was leading to a really bad state of just feeling super down and not wanting to get out of bed. And no one really knew it because I could put on an act and act like everything was okay. So we, we met and really um, fell in love quickly in that, like, we needed each other. She, her parents were um, splitting the, the, the month we met. So, um, you know, we kind of took turns saving each other. And obviously there was, there was um, chemistry and, and, and passion and attraction and all those things that come at the beginning of a relationship. And then, you know, when we got into it and had kids and looked at, at a decade long life together, you know, the last three or four years, we really sucked at being married and we were like trying really hard to make it work. You know, it, it, anyone that says like, man, this marriage thing is a knack. Like, this is great. It's like getting divorced soon. Yeah. Um, it's like we just, especially being in the public eye, um, not only the family I married into, but also her um, choosing to be, in the lifestyle space, you know, people were really judgmental and couldn't imagine that we would make this decision from a place of love for each other as a positive transition for our kids to do this, to say, listen, let's not model a, a marriage of proximity and, um, and pragmatism because we have kids. Let's show them what they should aspire to build in a successful marriage and let's also show them happy mom and happy dad because we're not happy together married and you know like we gave each other a huge hug the day we decided to do it we gave each other a hug in divorce court when it was official like we we love each other we just suck at being married and we shouldn't be married and we will be in each other's lives forever as co-parents and like have the best relationship we've had in a long time now because we didn't tether success to making we knew didn't work for us. Okay. Yeah, that's that's there's a there's a beauty to that where it it's almost like almost like, enlightening. 
You, well, you, know? you know how some, sometimes people are like, man, I want to have their marriage. I want to be in love like that. But I'm like, man, I want to be divorced like Kyle and Ava. <laughs> yeah, <dude. laughs> you know, when I grew up, I want to get divorced like Kyle, dude. It's tough, it's tough sometimes, too. Like, listen, like, there's heartache and there's, like, man, there's doubt. There's all, there's all these things that creep in when anything ends, right? But, like, you know, we're just – we're we're very – um we're just very open, honest people, and 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 thank God we are with each other, and we're making it work. That's awesome. It's amazing. Yeah, it, look, it, it is a. I think it, it makes you know when, when you first even announced it and you post it on Instagram. It, even my honest reaction was like, "All right, what's what's this about? What oh, are these phonies doing?" <laughs> you know, this is part you, of the divorce agreement. You know what I mean? You, it feels like <laughs> what is he what is he doing to me to make me feel bad about this or whatever? But it is. A, <laughs> The best is when I went on. I went on this. Uh, one of my friends got me to go on the dating app Raya, and like hard sold me on si- on signing. And we were laughing. We we're on the couch, and I even talked with Ev, and I was like, "Eva, you want to help me like set up my dating um, account?" She goes, "A little too soon for that. <laughs> like we're having. Like, come on, relax." So I set it up, and of course, like someone leaks that, and there's this big headline like right when we get divorced that that an- another one that's supposed to be salacious, you know. Um, estranged husband, you know, gets on dating app, and it's like, what do you mean? You mean divorced husband created a dating app account? Yeah. And by the way, how do you get at that point? It's like they're just so desperate for what we're doing to, and a lot of people, I guess not a lot, but some of those people that need validation or comfort or, or just to, or just to bitch for for no better reason than they want someone else to feel bad because they feel bad. You know, they, they just there are people that can't believe that because you're not doing what they do and, yeah. and you're not doing it the way they choose to do it, then it's got to be. Well, wrong. yeah, dude, you're like, gorgeous. Gonna, people want to knock wrong. you down a peg. But now that they see your <laughs> earring, you've done it for them. So <laughs> we got more with Kyle when we get back after this. Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for listening to the episode. We just want to bring it with a word from one of our sponsors, us and you. That's right. Gully Squad out in full force. Uh, That's right. Uh, out. I mean, you mean in, in full force. We are staying inside. <laughs> we, are, we are outdoors <laughs> yeah. spreading this disease. That's what we do. Gully Squad. We cough in everyone's mouths, <laughs> But we, dude. we're spreading gulliness, all right? None, That's of, that, right. none of that COVID nonsense. Nah, dude. We're, sp- we're spreading COVID-69. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's the fun one. Yeah, dude. You didn't think you'd want it in the beginning, but when you get it, you're like, you know what? It's kind of fun. So, yes, uh, shout out to, 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 to Gully Squad. And, uh, yeah, for people who help uh, support the show, help us uh, put out more content. We've been doing a lot more stuff, especially uh, on uh, live streaming. Uh, they've been a part of it as well. We've been doing stuff on Twitch. It's been really, really fun. Uh, even though, yeah, we're stuck at home, we're, we can still uh, do some fun stuff and, and give, you know, whether it's a exclusive content a dope slack channel uh we're, we're still uh putting out great work uh and then that's all because of gully squad absolutely and they they support us and we want to we want to make sure that that's uh we give them back some cool content and also we want to make sure we find other people that want to come hang out in this slack channel because so far it is pretty late yeah. it's all it's pretty awesome exactly so if you want to join gully squad all you got to do is go to soccercooligans.com and click on the join gully squad button it's right there on the menu it's at the top it is at the bottom uh very visible easy to find and it's a it's a great community and there's also uh great perks obviously we you know the gully squad was invited to our birthday party and uh, right. how lit was that i mean they got to they got to hang out with who are some of the folks they got to hang out with, Alexis? I mean, it was a wild time that I'm <laughs> kind of forgetting that because I drank so heavily. But we had Sal Volcano of the Impractical Jokers come through. Yeah, that's right. Okay. We, we, that's right. The Impractical Jokers. We had Alexi Lawless come through, who some say is a kind of a clown, right? Yeah. See? <laughs> so <laughs> he's, he's a less practical joker. Uh, he's uh, He also serenaded us, yeah. right, with a guitar. Ellie Menjum of Darby Days hey. and Copa 90 fame. We had a uh, Tom Martini. Zach Valentine, Cal Martino, Edson Buttle. Yes. I mean, everybody uh, was there. It was super, super fun. Uh, so those are some of the cool uh, perks that come with being uh, uh, in Gully Squad. And, and we try to give everybody a really fun and unique experience that you may not be able to get everywhere else 
if you you know just a casual soccer fan so feel free to join uh again uh you can uh, subscribe at what like whatever level and whatever you want to give every month uh and there's different uh you know perks for uh, the, the different levels as well so make sure uh go, again go to soccercoolings.com uh click on the join gully squad button and come aboard toot toot <laughs> All right, we are back with Cal Martino, and this is this is great. So a little behind the scenes, uh, we were talking about how his battery life may not make it throughout the end of the interview. It didn't make it; it barely just made it to, to the end of that last segment. So, 0%. Kyle, we made zero percent. Which how how can a computer still be on a zero percent battery? <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, that's that's a miracle. This is the new Passover, right? <laughs> <laughs> the battery lasted for seven days and seven nights. <laughs> we've had no one from that the first step. Yes, yeah, so you're getting yeah. your you're getting oh. your Jewish holidays confused, Alexis. Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but he cuts hair really well, though. If you yeah, I bet I'm bad at that. If this had anything to do with pizza, you know I'd be all right. <laughs> Religion, so, not my thing. I'm glad. Okay, I'm glad it worked out. So let's continue, Kyle. I, I did want to ask you about. Um, because the last time we spoke to you was uh, after uh, after the um, the U.S. soccer presidential election, and this was at, essentially after the uh, we were in Chicago, I believe, uh, yeah, for the well, United I Soccer Coaches on the trail, didn't I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this was, I think, that was the last time we we spoke to you on the show, and you were. Uh, I, I don't think we we didn't have a chance to talk about uh, at the, at that time the Save the Crew movement because uh, this happened. I believe it happened after, but yeah. you were uh, a huge part of that, and and it was great to see former uh, Columbus Crew uh, players really do what the fans were doing as well, and and, and try to support the, the the club and keep the franchise uh, there in uh, in their city. Uh, I have. I'm wearing. I got this from the Save the Crew uh, group, and they were awesome when, when we were there. Um, what was Is the- that a medium? Because mine never made it. <laughs> oh, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> Weird, huh? Oh, crazy, huh? <laughs> but they said they're mailing would... it, but they forget that it's at zero percent. So zero <laughs> percent chance you're gonna get it. So you might actually still get it. <laughs> what was what was the experience like uh for you? Um in, in one, you know, you you are, were always very critical of, of how US soccer is run and how even MLS is run. Uh and and you know, kind of being that middle ground, being that former player, be looking towards the future and not and hoping th- things like this don't happen again. Yeah. So it was a, it was a tough um, situation for me simply because uh, the team that made my dream come true, the team that made me a professional soccer player was going to not exist anymore. You know, there'd be a dad explain to my kids, you know, I played for this team. They'd be like, well, that doesn't exist. So they'd be like, well, I kind of used to, but and then like, it's an awesome <laughs> line. You're not going to get it. Um, so like, you know, emotionally and romantically, it was like, it was heartbreaking to know that that was a possibility. And, um, you know, during the election, I was, you know, <laughs> there were too many fires to put out like that. That wasn't even on my on my radar, um, trying to understand the youth landscape and all the craziness that's going on there that's continuing to go on there. And there's no part of me that enjoys the bad things that are going on right now and the failures. Um, you know, I, we all step forward, whoever did to try to reverse things, but also because we believe in the game in this country and obviously our federation and, and want to turn around. But like for the crew, um, when it started to look really bad and it was months away from getting that kind of, all right, it's happening, it's done. I got on the phone with a couple of former players with McBride and Dante Washington and Tom Prestis and it started by just saying, like, you know, what can we do? Um, and, you know, we kind of kicked around some ideas. And I just said, listen, whether we can help save the crew or not, we have to go back there. Like, we have to show our face because, by the way, we haven't saved anything. Save the crew created by fans and, and getting behind the scenes and seeing how hard they yeah. were working and what they did. They're the ones that saved the crew. We, we just came to their to their side. We, we just stood there with them. And ultimately, I said, listen, if this is going to happen, like we need one last dance, like one last amazing go in front of these fans. And um, I tried to on the down low with just Dante and press this create like start calling players. And, and I was amazed at how many players were, you know, Edson Buttle and 
and and uh and you know mike clark and mcbride and all, all these guys that were and Mazenoff, um was in town but couldn't play, play in the game and like harks and all these guys that like wanted to be there and just were like all about saving the crew and showing up and um the turnout was amazing and playing in front of the the, the crew fans was incredible but what was wild was like it was supposed to be a kind of funeral. Like it was spoke like it was looking like we were coming into town and it was gonna be like a really, really sad kind of last last party together. We um we had to I you know, MLS got wind of what I was doing, and so we had to do it in this really clandestine way. So we were like tucked off on like a historic site, like away from the stadium, like our own little piece of land and like 2000 crew fans showed up in the rain and we played, we hung out with them. And the, I think it was like a couple days before the, the talks had happened behind the scenes and they brokered a deal to keep it there. And the new ownership group stepped forward. And so like, it ended up being the coolest thing ever because we thought it was just going to be this bittersweet, awful scenario of saying goodbye to this club. We loved, to these fans we loved, but it ended up being this massive celebration. Yeah. Wow. You said it was in a clandestine way. Where was there pushback from the league? Oh, yeah. about- they, were, they were definitely not happy we were doing it because, um, you know, it, it essentially it, it was such a bad scenario for for Major League Soccer where you seem it seemed like a, a win win situation. It's like this guy wants out, right? He wants to go to Austin. You want a team in Austin? Send that guy to Austin. There is another ownership group that wants a team here. Like show me the victim. Like, what, what are we, what are we, yeah, talking? Yeah. why have we created this zero sum game of like, and so, you know, there's a lot of nuance behind the scenes, but it, they got win right when some of the more high profile players were like, yeah, I'm, I'm down. It started to get around. And um, yeah, I, 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 I was not asked to shut it down, but I was, I was um, told <laughs> they were not very happy with me because ultimately it was bringing more exposure to what save the crew had brought so much exposure to which is this isn't right this shouldn't happen yeah, yeah. It, it is a like um yeah because i think after the it, it was sorted and we 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 learned what was going to happen it feels like the trajectory of, of what american soccer was going to look like was really effective right because it did feel like all right well I think it, it felt like they, the the original plan was like maybe twenty eight teams and and maybe not go too high. But then after that happened, now it feels like all right, we're definitely going to thirty. Who knows? We're gonna we might merge yeah. with Liga MX and every, like like all these other things are gonna happen. And it feels like that was the turning point of like what what is potentially something massive coming uh, in the yeah, next couple of years. Not, they seem to to, to have um, it all figured out, like I do in my um, being interviewed on podcasts. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, we're on zero percent battery. They're just like, trying to get the other thing. Like, no, we we don't sell players. We keep them. No, no, we sell players. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're going to expand past like twenty. We're going to seventy five. Like, so, There's so and, many questions you know, I have. Like, I'm not a. I, I love MLS. Like MLS gave me my my dream. And like, you know, I still have friends that are coaching in MLS, working in MLS, and. um I just don't look at it as this like mutually exclusive, you know, uh, country club where b- beyond these gates, football doesn't exist. Like, you know, of course I want promotion relegation like most fans. And I go about it in a way where I don't do it with a pitchfork and a flamethrower and a torch. I, I try to broker us getting this yeah. the, the best sporting format on the planet to this country. But like, you know, as much as MLS gets wrong, like this is where the, the, the people that are pro rel or whatever need to just wake up is like, it's pretty incredible what it, what exists. And like, don't forget the one that tried before failed, right? Like, is some of their success due to inertia and the game just growing in this country? Yes. Are, are they getting some things wrong? Absolutely. I'm the first to speak up and I've talked to Don and others personally about that, but you know, th- these aren't villains twisting their mustache. It's like when, when, when you create that narrative, then they don't want to listen in a world of discourse where fans actually do know what they're talking about. Like, you know, we should be able to give them credit for the things they've done well and then be really upset with the things that we don't. Yeah, think I, I think there's that there's a certain uh, positive note uh, that the fans are are have forgotten where we came from that we're so spoiled to where we are now that they're, they're mad at what we have now. 
which yeah. is a sign that American soccer is progressing. But that's also comes with people being fans of other leagues and being like, wait a minute. How come ours doesn't look and feel like that? You know, yeah. and I think a lot of fans would rather get upset than say, here's what we have. Here's where we came from. And what could we do? There is a way to move forward. You know what I mean? And it doesn't have to be by throwing stuff. Although, you know me, I'm a fan of throwing stuff. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> throwing stuff is the only way. Yeah, sometimes we got. I, I want. I have another question following up with this, but I'm going to ask as soon as we. I get thought back. you were going to throw the break, and I was like, "That's the best segue ever." <laughs> I just did, and you stepped just on did. it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Great we'll segue. be back after this. Stop it, nice, bro. <laughs> I feel like we're we're two uncles that were being asked to take care of a very rambunctious teenager. Whenever <laughs> Cal's on, I'm like, Cal, don't hit that button. Cal, what are you doing? Put that knife <laughs> down, Cal. <laughs> closing, the, closing the inside for a long time is not a good idea. No, I've, I've also met you outside, and. It's it's not different. All right. <laughs> so here's my favorite thing. Is I'm that, my excuses for my behavior. <laughs> my favorite thing about Kyle is that you don't have enough of a filter to not answer some questions. You know what I'm saying? Like you're, you're sharp. You get when you're like, ah, I don't want to talk about that. So I'm not going to, but like, I feel like I can ask you anything and I'm not, I don't, I'm not, I'm not here to get you in trouble, but you do have this sort of thing where like you were a part of MLS, you're considered a bit of a legend. You know, you, you are working for the NBC sports. You're like this sort of authority and like this voice that's in soccer. So when we talk to you about like what MLS is doing, you can be very honest, but at the same time, it's like you've spoken to Don Garber on the phone about these things. So like, you're not saying things out of, out of step. So my next question is sort of in that line, when they talk about, merging with Liga Amakis and this sort of Super League or possibly U.S. soccer being able to compete with Conbol, uh and and the sort of these these big growing plans that seem to now all of a sudden be getting kicked in a high gear with with a World Cup coming in 2026, if that's even possible with everything that's happening right now. What are your thoughts on someone who is able to sort of see like at a very, have a very close view of how the how the European game is played, but also ha- be from here and and sort of have it both affect you. Do you think these are good ideas? Are you afraid of what might happen? Do you think we should pull back? Like, where's your head at? Um, I'll, I'll anecdotally tell you a conversation I was having um, with Claudio Reyna during the election who, um, you know, got to play with him. Dude, absolute legend. Incredible on the field. Wonderful guy. Very smart. I've um, never seen him blink. <laughs> Intense. Uh, bring that up. Yeah, he's just he's just conserving battery. He's always. Um, so he he and I were talking about a lot of these issues, and he was really helpful for me during the the campaign, and not in a support sense. You know, he didn't have a vote, but just you know, the guy believes in in the game in this country. Has come from a background. Um, his his uh, family from South America. His wife played obviously geo doing incredible i mean that that is a soccer family and we talked about like a north american power league like before a lot of this stuff was going on we were like you know that that would be a really interesting and really exciting prospect i mean the the idea of that as a as a property as a sports property you know i'm i'm into that like that 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 for me especially when like we went down and and I I would when I was with the Galaxy we played against Tigres we played against Atlas we played against Club America we played and like that rivalry is legit it's real you know it it trickles down from Dosa Zero it comes from that incredible yeah, yeah. rivalry we have with El Tri and it's like what a miss that we don't capitalize it on, on a different level and part of the complication with bringing in promotion relegation. And this is like some of the things that like the, the rabid foaming mouth, like pro rel group that like kill anyone that's not pure blood. Like this is the things they don't, they, they don't realize it's like you legally can't do it. Like you legally cannot just start promotion relegation with people that just spent $200 billion. I'd be like me, like selling a condo building and being like, yeah, you can buy this condo building for $7 million. Right after you buy it, I'm like, but those three bedrooms are actually that guy's. It's like, yeah. <laughs> if your dog poops in the quad, we take your condo away, and now you got to go live in a project. You're like, wait, what happened? <laughs> no, no, you know, we said like roof deck. We said no, no, we're taking the roof. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, so, but like mixing in, and this is where I think there's enough progressive MLS owners now especially some that have uh, other f- um, franchises in promotion relegation countries, they, they get the, the incredible dramatic, yes, risk, but risk is exciting now, isn't it? It's like the, they get 
the benefit of in a sports landscape that is diluted with a lot of playoff format, right? To introduce a very unique, um, you know, sporting meritocracy that like they, they kind of get it. They just needed to make more financial sense and how they spin out of this single unit, um, single entity system into that, you know, league MX and some of these other leagues, like, I mean, they, they do better ratings in our country than, than a lot of our games. I mean, we, we forget that the majority of our country doesn't speak the language we're speaking right now and has an affinity for this game before we introduce it to them, and but has an affinity for a club that is not in this country. And it's like, yes. if they could see their club come to town, if they could follow the league that also has, you know, uh, LAFC in it, right? Then they'll see Carlos Vela. They'll, they'll learn the stories. They'll learn other stars. It's like part of the reason that that I, you know, watch watch Norwich is not is not because I'm like die hard. I got to see a Norwich game. It's like every now and then I'll see Campbell. I'll be like, man, this kid's really good when he's playing. I'll check it out. But it's like if I wasn't watching Manchester United, I wouldn't have learned that. So it's like we we try to use shoulder programming in a like sports lateral sense, like someone that watches baseball, let's put it like right after that. It's like, no, no, no. Like oh, yeah. link with all these other soccer properties and find a format that can invite all of that in. So you have people that come from different backgrounds, celebrate different clubs, watch different leagues, getting eyeballs on what you're trying to show them rather than saying, trust me, it's as good as, as La Liga. It's like, no, it's not. Don't, yeah. don't say that to them. Like our fans are smart enough to flip it on. Even if they just start watching, be like, no, it's not. <laughs> no, that's, that's better. What, what do you mean? So it's like, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm a big fan of MLS. I'm just a fan of, of the game first. So like, I, I don't, I don't care any loyalty to pretend that what's not good for soccer in total is what I'm down for because I played in the league. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. And, and the, you know, and speaking of the uh, election a little bit, obviously recently the, 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 the person that you lost to uh, Carlos Cordero uh, resigned. Uh, what were your thoughts on, on him leaving? Obviously we know it, it was obviously related to the U S women's national team and, and their trial and, and all the, and the, and the arguments that they put out. But as someone, you know, I can imagine because I saw a lot of people in the, on the athletes council were like, you know, I made I made a mistake. I shouldn't have voted for Cordero. Obviously, hindsight is twenty twenty. But what was uh, as a as a former candidate? What was your uh, take on it? Um, I, I had a few different reactions. It's a bad. I told you so. You know, it's it, it's not one you really want yeah. to happen. You got um, the you got the tweet in your drafts though. Stop playing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I've got, I've got a scathing to send out unless I have too much to drink. Um, no, it, you know, at first, and listen, Carlos Cordero is a is a really good guy. Like I, I, I talked with him a couple times on the campaign trail. I feel bad for him in a way because he, he this problem is is not on him, right? Like that that level of misogyny and, and naivete and just repugnant behavior to even stand behind some of the things that not only they were arguing, although I'm sure they'll t tell us in hindsight it was a successful argument with what's happened since then with the ruling. But, you know, it, there are a lot of people that haven't stood up for a long time and say, I don't think we should be doing this. You know, forget legality. I think we should be a really progressive country that – Title IX and these other things that we've been able to put in place over the years in sports to create more equity that's created the powerhouse that we have as the U.S. Women's National Team. You know, we should be on the forefront, not like trying to figure out where's the the absolute skinny line of legality where we can get away with treating our, our, our world class World Cup winners, how we treat them. And so um, it was a sad moment because. Um, him stepping down is a, is a scape. It's a, it was the right thing to do, but a scapegoat thing. The problem still exists because there is no infrastructure that would check something like that, that would be able to listen to our athletes the way um, former players uh, on the women's side have been trying to advocate for them. Current players have been trying to advocate for them. The men, the current and former, trying to advocate for more unity, a, a more aligned federation. It's like it's a shame because. There are great people within the organization, and Carlos Guerrero stepping down does not solve any problem. We still have a massive problem where we have the facade of a federation that um, that isn't yet the, the the mechanics of it and the, and the architecture of it is not yet capable of creating 
a transparent, inclusive, and progressive federation that can lead top to bottom our entire sports landscape. It's just they're so far away from being that. Yeah. You know, this feels a little bit like the campaign again, but with the earring, I just take it a little <laughs> bit more seriously. You know, like, I mean, oh, man, I, this guy's cool. I you they would have voted for me. If I had to <laughs> Yeah, dude, there's a guy there's a guy right now in a Camaro going like Cal's rad. Relegation. <laughs> Listen, yeah, equal play, all that. But I gotta yeah. This is yeah. this is who's, awesome, my, who's my running mate? Right here. <laughs> <It's hearing. laughs> <laughs> I got a headache from laughing so much. Uh, so, Kyle, I, I get that check out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Would you, would you, I got mine from eating ice cream too fast in the commercial break. <laughs> um, Kyle, uh, let's talk uh, about two projects that you are uh, also involved with: uh, one Street FC and one uh, Over Under. Uh, let's start with Street FC because I play in street fc i've had uh some great slash embarrassing times there uh with some of the quality that, that is um uh, on the uh, on the pitch but it is a really really cool thing and uh i'll let you explain a little bit more well um yeah thanks for being a member i'm also a member and uh, like the origin of it is that like i wanted something like that um I, so I had a career end, ending injury and stopped playing at 28 and really like stopped playing altogether and um, you know, I, 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 I will in a second talk about the, the election and, and how that got me thinking about street FC. But for me, it was like, there's so many of my buddies that either used to play were really good players or some that, that played when they were little and want to start playing again. They just couldn't find the Avenue to do so. And like in New York, for instance, there's a lot of great leagues, Bowery league and NYC footy. I mean, you know, all these guys, yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, so it's like, there's all these amazing groups out there that run, um, you know, pretty competitive to really competitive, you, you know, recreational soccer, right? Um, for me, I looked at the election and the issue of consequence I, I was most concerned about was access to the game. And so I, I, I thought, like, how is it possible the easiest game on the planet to facilitate, the, the most blue-collar inclusive sport on the planet, is too expensive or difficult to facilitate in this country? Like, how, how did we mess that up like how did we do that kind of how like the beers told us like diamonds are forever meanwhile like you know there, there's like a hundred million of them locked in a vault <laughs> in, in, in new york city and they're just rocks like, um I, I i just we we really marketed the game as this very like got to do it this way got to have grass got to fly all over the place got to pay pay this money and like it's a blacktop sport yeah and i grew up playing it on in gyms with Hispanic adults and, and, and you go to Bridgeport, pay, pay $5 and go in the gym and it was winter stays or Edson Butter, one of my dear friends, his dad, Winston, had a bunch of Caribbean guys that would get together and play pickup. And it was like, that's how I played so many of my hours and learned so much when I was little. So I was like, well, hold on a second. All right. So we have a lot of kids in a certain socioeconomic class that tend to be the best players that ever play this game. If you look at the Ballon d'Or list and reverse engineer that. Um, they all live in close proximity to concrete space. What, what do we have in New York City? 1,800 basketball courts, <laughs> handball courts? Okay, well, why don't we try to get everyone to come start playing pickup games on those? Like, it was as simple as that at the beginning. And then I, I had a couple of my interns during the election go around. I mapped 50 basketball courts to see what the activity was like on them. And they were dead, dormant, all the time. I mean, some of them didn't have a rim on one side, like, you know, I grew up playing basketball as well. And it like even made me sad that they're not going to be used for basketball. So I thought, well, listen, we got to activate these spaces and um, shift the paradigm away from this idea that you got to make sure you have your cleats or your turf shoes. You got to get, you know, you got to make sure that you're the referee there, or you got to get into this league. It's, you know, it's so hard for people to spontaneously or casually jump into that. So I was like, I'm starting this was the hyperbolic dream. I'm starting the biggest football club on the planet and I'm going to take the atom of a pickup game and the list of 50 people that are invited to it and make that 10 million people invited to it and, and put it in multiple cities here and around the world. So it's like, who's got a lot of people together to go experience something out in cities. And um, someone was like, Hey, have you ever met that guy, Dennis Crawley? And I was like, mm -hmm. the guy who started a football club in, in Kingston and then PSL are like, yeah. They're like, yeah, he also like he's also started Foursquare. I'm yeah. like, I gotta talk to that yeah, dude. Yeah. So one day over a beer watching a game, I I pitched Dennis on this idea of I'm gonna solve a, a problem in this country by 
getting everyone to play a specific type of pickup on concrete, activating spaces around New York City that aren't being used, you have to build me a really sophisticated tech platform that can make us 100 games or 10 games, depending on the demand. And he goes, so kind of like, what do you, and I was like, I don't know, like a soul cycle of pickup soccer. And we both were like, oh, that sounds terrible. We're like, but that's kind of it. And yeah. so the last piece of that is we wanted to bring adults back to the game and create this kind of, I grew up on Anwood mixtapes and Rucker Park stuff, like create this real cultural vibe that, by the way, is already there, but just add to it and bring this new. Yeah. I, and, and I've been on the on the bad end of those uh, of those skills. Yeah. <laughs> no, but honestly, man, like you, you, you're, you're, you know, you, you're being self-deprecating, but like you are the perfect example of and and. Listen, you're not you're not nearly as bad as you think you are. Uh, <laughs> I've had some okay days. Yeah, there are beginners that are literally kicking a ball for the first time with yeah. us. And like for me, being a part of a club shouldn't be how good how good you are at the game. There should be a level for everyone because, like, you know, when I see Street FC, I see members that just retired or played D1 in school, and and I see people that literally kicked a ball for the first time last week. And like the dream well, has anyone is ever taken a sandwich out of their pocket when they score and celebrate because I did that. <laughs> now, you were talking a little bit about street FC, which is amazing, right? You got a bunch of people coming out to play soccer. You also do something else called over under and they're separate only specifically so that you confuse everybody. Why don't you tell everyone what over under is and how you somehow convinced me to go to Grand Rapids, Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> it's because Christian wasn't available. Um, so, <laughs> So, you know, uh, Street FC and Over Under Initiative were, were out of the same, you know, the, the, the origin of it, out of the same belief that we can activate the game in the streets. And so after I proved I could get people that never had before to go play on concrete and enjoy it and have that repeat and scale, I wanted to show that we needed an infrastructure solution for the kids that... Um, Hopefully we can fund a, a Street FC youth program that has hundreds of thousands of kids in it one day that the adults are playing to pay for the kids to be in it for free. But I want kids to just show up on a court with a ball. And so I, when I played soccer, I'd fly around the world, South America and Europe. And, and you guys know this, every single court has a soccer goal and a hoop. Although in those countries, I, I guess they let them put a basketball hoop over their soccer goal. Mm -hmm. I just thought here's a really low cost, high impact way to to bring um facilities to every street corner for these kids and also don't tell them this is only soccer because we will always be a multi-sport country we have to let kids sample things so the idea was i i built these goals that you saw out in grand rapids when you think thankfully came to host um our first ever uh, court launch and so the idea is put goals that can um like my Murphy bed, my first New York City apartment that was so small, I couldn't fit a bed in it. It's like, make the goals go away so the kids determine what the court will be on any given day. You know, like that, um, you know, foosball table that turned into a ping pong table, that yeah. turned into a street hockey table. We have to give these kids on every street corner access to the, the greatest social empower, empowerment vehicle on the planet, the game of soccer, and tell them to also play basketball and play street hockey and play these other things. So Over Under Initiative is a nonprofit that goes around the country to try and convert these courts to bring the sport and multiple sports for the kids that are being locked out. It's great. I mean, you just in general, even I, I grew up in Brooklyn, but even playing in Street FC and being able to have access to the game. I didn't grow up playing the game, but even the fact I can just turn on an app and I'm a, a couple train stops away from a, a dope game is it, it feels pretty good. So, yeah. So thank you for that investment of your time because it's uh, it, it's it's made me a, a happier soccer player in general. Yeah. Well, I don't want to be I don't want to be emotional, but like, honestly, like that is why I started it. Like, like I started it because I wasn't playing anymore and it's a cathartic experience that connects you with people and, and makes you feel good about yourself and makes you feel like you're a part of something special. So it makes me feel so good that, you know, people like you are out there enjoying it with the rest of us. Okay. Well, thank you for tuning in. Thank you to Kyle Martino for joining us uh, today. Uh, we're happy that he found this charger. That's really the most <laughs> important thing. Uh, Kyle, thank you again. Is there anything you want to let, let people know uh, before we sign off? Um, that 
Alexis uh, did find the charger to his beard trimmer, and he will get rid of that last piece. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I hate you so much. <laughs> so, uh, it's so good to see you, man. Thank you Great so much, Kyle. You. Yeah, and like I said, uh, make sure uh, Plain Street FC, especially if you're in New York, uh, check out Over Under. Uh, Kyle's doing a bunch of awesome things. And when the Premier League is back, you'll see him on NBC Sports. So uh, make sure you follow uh, at Fubo Sports on all social media. Subscribe to the YouTube channel at Soccer Cooligans and the Soccer Cooligans YouTube channel. Feel free to do that. Uh, so with that said, uh, for Kyle Martino, my name is Christian Polanco. I'm Alexis Guerreros. And together, what are we? The, the Cooligans! Cool